It's the same old story. One person goes on a shooting rampage and law-abiding gun owners are the ones who should be in the dock, if the media are to be believed. The government are desperate to get a quick win. They're struggling a little bit with what's happened in Afghanistan, with COVID. You know, they can't get a break anywhere. And it's often a real easy, quick win to just clamp down on possibly the most law-abiding part of society, i.e., you know, firearms and shotgun license holders. It's a real easy win because we'll all get a little bit annoyed, but there's not a great deal that we can actually do. The shootings in Plymouth by licensed gun owner Jake Davison came after he posted angry rants on obscure social media sites. He'd had his shotgun confiscated after a complaint, then returned to him, putting Devon and Cornwall police under the spotlight. Politicians and anti-gun groups are calling for tougher measures against the shooting community in England and Wales, including monitoring social media accounts of gun owners. Realistically, is it possible? What this is is a request for police forces to review people who may be a risk. And I think the tabloids are overstretching the point. The Guardian, scraping around for news, has said that he had an interest in guns. Yeah, well, I don't think any of us are surprised if he had a shotgun certificate. If you make an application or for renewal or whatever, and you um, come to the notice of police because they look at their intelligence and something crops up, you could expect to have your social media record reviewed. But I do not think that every certificate holder will have their social media record reviewed instantly. That's not going to happen. It is a minefield to start getting into monitoring people's social media. Devon and Cornwall have got about 3,000 officers, which sounds like quite a lot until you look at this, the area. Then there's the ones on specialist units. I, I should imagine that their social media capability is reasonably reasonably small anyway, and is probably inundated with sort of allegations around hate crime and domestic violence, I would think. It appears, from what the Chief Constable says, that Devon and Cornwall did not do a good job when this chap came to their notice. He was, he, he was accused of an assault. They, I presume it was they, who insisted he went on the anger management course. But even going on an anger management course should raise red flags about possession of firearms. I don't know how many people you know have been on an anger management course. I don't know any. So it, uh, and, and you, you, would, you would certainly question how valuable those anger management courses are. You know, I know a lot of people who've gone on speed awareness courses, but they all still go over 30. Besides a shortage of manpower, there are laws preventing police snooping on social media accounts. There's a, a legislation called the Regulates, Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act, and it's called RIPA. And that is an act that's brought in uh, to regulate the state spying on you and me and, uh, and allowing us their personal spaces on social media and in the house and everything. So if I wanted to put a bug in your house, so I'd have to write a ripper application and it would have to be specifically authorised for a specific reason. And there are a number of them. So if I was looking at your front door, for instance, because I thought you might be a drug dealer, why should I be allowed to cut to get information about the DHL bloke, for instance, who comes to the door, when he's there and what he's doing, or the postman or the milkman? All of that is what we call collateral intrusion. Everybody come into your house. They could be family, friends, a whole host of other people. So it's a really, really complex area. These incidents are extremely rare, so it's unlikely laws will be changed after the latest, as previous governments have dismissed the idea. Talking about Cumbrian taxi driver Derek Bird, a licensed gun owner who shot 12 people before killing himself in 2010, Prime Minister David Cameron said, you can't legislate to stop a switch flicking in someone's head and for this dreadful sort of action to take place. If we are uh, private individuals are going to be allowed to possess firearms in their homes, then there are going to have to be safeguards. And what, what, what we must ensure is that those safeguards are reasonable and work. So we as people who possess firearms, have every interest in ensuring that crazies like this chap down in Plymouth don't get a certificate because we are most likely to suffer when the system goes wrong. There is another major area of problem, and that is in medical testing. 
there is no statutory responsibility on the doctor. He can participate or not as he or she wishes. He can charge outrageous fees for doing so. He can plead conscientious objection and say he's not going to take part, even though this is all about protecting public safety. It really puzzles me how you can plead conscientious objection to, uh, to something that protects public safety. And if he never had a shotgun, you wonder if he would have used a knife or a car. There's been over 130 people killed in London um, since the beginning of the year using knives generally, and I haven't heard a peep out of that. I'm not looking to downplay what's happened in, in Plymouth, but there's a whole issue around people being angry. If they can't find these people with knives who are looking to go out and commit crimes, why could they possibly find one individual who's on a, a, a website that most of us have never heard of before? We invited UK anti-shooting group Gun Control Network to take part in an interview, but its staff declined. Instead, a spokeswoman told us the current checks are inadequate and the incident shows a complete failure to protect the public. 